Hi there, Mary Lee here, just dropping in to give you another update from Managed Isolation here in Auckland. Uh, today is day five for me, um, and so yeah, that just seems to be um, a bit of a surprise. I don't know, I, to have been here five days, it doesn't really feel like it, so um, that's good. That's really, really good. Uh, today is... Uh, because it's Monday, it was a work day for me. So um, I uh, have been setting myself up some little routines to keep me occupied. Um, in case you didn't realize, uh, routines are actually really good for your mental health because um, our body and our system, our nervous system, likes things that are familiar. And so even when you're you know, in isolation at home or in, in isolation, isolation here like I am in managed isolation um, having routines is actually really good um, uh, one is because it does give you and uh, your nervous system a sense of security and stability but also because it helps you fill in the time and you know uh, by day five a lot of people could be starting to feel really demotivated um, and starting to feel a bit stir crazy but if you've got your routines you can just sort of even if you're not motivated you can just sort of go through the motions and so my little routine is um, that I get up in the morning and um, do some yoga just to get the blood flowing and um, then eat my breakfast uh, and um, then have a shower and do all my stuff and then either go out for a walk or um, do some reading and then you know on a work day I, um, I log in at 10 o'clock which is 7 o'clock um, Aussie time which means that my day sort of runs from 7 to 3.30 ish um, where I just go about my normal business um, I had my um, had a break at three o'clock and actually went out for a walk down the road um, for one of the um, the guided walks I guess but one of the walks the walk that we do um, down the road with the security people and then came back and finished my day had my dinner and now I'm um, just gonna watch tv i guess so yeah look having having little routines are really good and um and i'm quite happy with my little routine i i sort of get out and about and walk around i was saying to somebody um that i'm doing okay for a person who's actually um living in a hotel room under managed isolation if i have a look at my watch it tells me that i've done uh, almost seven and a half thousand steps today uh which is more than some people do um uh, on a normal day when they're not in isolation so you know for me it's really important to keep moving um, you know so that you don't get a stiff neck and you know the body feels good and um, you know I like it I like a bit of exercise and I like to go for walks and things when I'm at home so yeah I'm, I'm trying to keep my routine as as regular um, and as similar as I possibly can to what it would be if I was at home um, and it's working because it's day five and I'm you know still smiling so um, okay yesterday I realized that I actually only get 15 minutes um, to do a video if I'm going to upload it onto Instagram so I'm going to try and keep this short um, I've had lots of people coming back to me either in the comments or um, because I've got this in a couple of different channels either in the comments or sending me um, direct messages asking questions so I've probably got more questions and I've got time um, to answer them in one post so I will spread those out um, over a couple of different videos but again if you've got any questions please um, please ask them either directly to me through a private message or um, put them in the comments on the channel that you uh, see them in and I will do my best to answer them. So yesterday I talked about um, the exemptions uh, for payment and, um, and wasn't really clear about it because I hadn't paid that much attention to it. Uh, but there was a question that came to me about what, what, what are the um, criteria for a waiver um, to actually have to pay for managed isolation if you're coming back and you are going to be here for the less than 90 days. Um, so I've pulled out the waiver form and I, I, can, um, I can give you the, the special circumstances that they've got here. Um, one is that if you're a New Zealander who, who, who left New Zealand for the purposes of going to collect somebody who needed to come back to New Zealand, um, 
and were unable to travel by themselves. Um, and so you need to have backup for all of this. So you need to have evidence from a doctor or, you know, somebody um, needs to, to write forms on that. And it's, it's all, it's, you know, what you need to do is all on the waiver forms. So, um, you know, you, you can get those off the Managed Isolation and Quarantine uh, website, which is miq.co.nz. I think that's it. Yep, miq.gov.nz. Um, the other thing is if you need to travel from New Zealand to receive medical treatment, um, or if you need to travel to or from New Zealand to receive medical treatment, um, if you are entering New Zealand to visit a seriously ill or dying close relative, or if you're entering New Zealand to attend a tangi or funeral. So those are the conditions that you may get a waiver um, from paying the managed isolation fee. Um, okay, so the other thing that um, I was asked was, you know, how hard is it to get a voucher? How long, how far ahead did I plan? So I started making um, moves to try and come back here in October. Um, I started looking and then uh, in November I actually made my booking. And in November... Um, the managed isolation spots were actually booked up through until January. So um, that was, you know, there's a, there was eight weeks or so in it that I had to wait. Um, once you go in it and you go into your managed isolation, and again, you go onto the, I've got a managed isolation system, you go in, you um, fill out the form online, pardon me, and, um, and you get a voucher, what is considered to be a voucher. And so that voucher lasts you for two days where you basically, you put dibs on a spot, you pencil your name in to a spot. You've got 48 hours to be able to book your flight. And then you have to send your flight, you have to go back into your booking, your voucher booking and put your flight details in um, so that you can um, tell them which flight that you'll be coming in on. So, so basically your flights and your managed isolation need to marry up. So of course, if you can't get a flight on the days that you've booked in to your managed isolation, then you're gonna to have to cancel that booking and try again. And so you do kind of have to have, um, you know, three screens going at, at all times just to make sure that, that you've got a day that you can get um, a, a spot in both places. Now, I think there's roughly 4,500 or you know, roughly 4,500 spots across New Zealand for, um, for managed isolation. And, um, and yeah, it can, it can be two to three months waiting list to actually be able to get one of those spots. So once you've got it, you want to hold on to that for grim death um, because if you cancel it, after, after those 48 hours, you go to the back of the queue and you've got to apply again. Um, there are circumstances, I believe, where you can um, get bumped up that list, but basically your life has to be in danger in order for you to not um, to, to not go on that waiting list. Um, and I think there's, there's, there was two, two reasons. I think uh, one was sort of like a domestic violence thing and I think the other one was um, that, that you were in some sort of danger. So um, again, I, I can't remember what it is. Um, but it's hard. It's hard. You know, I looked into it because the reason that I was coming back was, um, was quite urgent at the time. Um, and, um, and even based on, on what I was trying to get home for, that, that wasn't going to happen. Uh, in time. Um, so yeah, so pre-planning is really important um, going through that, that voucher system. And um, the, the other thing um, that happened to me, which, you know, sent me into a panic when I was already feeling pretty stressed and, and worried about this whole scenario of, of um, being able to book and come back over, was that my flight got cancelled. So on Christmas, uh, Christmas Eve, I got um, a call from the uh, travel agent to say that my flight had been cancelled and that I'd been bumped onto a flight the next day. And uh, when I asked them, well, what does that mean from a, a voucher perspective? They said, oh, we don't know. You're going to have to sort it out yourself. So anyway, what it, what it eventually meant after all the panic um, was that the airline in New Zealand actually, because they had changed the flight, they negotiated and, and organised with MIQ to get the voucher changed and then MIQ issued me with another voucher before I came over. So you need to have that hot little voucher, that, that voucher in your hot little hand 
and you can't actually get on the plane without the voucher um, and so you've got to have your tickets and your voucher and everything now the other thing um, which is a trap for young players particularly for New Zealanders who've been in Australia for a while is that if you are traveling like I was on a I, I live in Australia under a temporary visa um, I come backwards and forwards I'm a New Zealand citizen um, who lives and works in Australia and I am a permanent resident for the purposes of tax um, but I'm not a permanent resident so if you're a permanent resident or if you've become a citizen, a dual citizen or anything like that, you actually have to apply to be able to leave Australia to come back to New Zealand. So, so there's another layer of paperwork. Now, I got caught out at the airport when they asked me if I was a permanent resident. I didn't really understand the question. I said, well, yeah. And they said, oh, well, you need to go over there because you don't have the right paperwork. But once I actually had the conversation with the person at the counter, um, they they explained to me, you know, the special visa thing, and that I was fine to I was fine to leave, which um, it did send me into a little bit of a panic on the day. But anyway, that's probably why I cried when I got here. I was just so relieved. It's like right up until the last minute, I thought, oh my god, don't tell me I'm not going to be able to go home. So um, so yeah, so look, um, that's a little bit more information for you. Um, there's lots more questions, so. So I guess I'll be back tomorrow and uh, if you have any more questions in the meantime please feel free to ask them um, like I say I'll do my best to, to find that out but um, yeah that's me signing off from day five in managed isolation in Auckland I am still smiling and in high spirits and feeling very well and um, despite being incarcerated I'm also feeling really grateful that um, I do actually have the opportunity to come back home and be here and um and do what i need to do all right so thanks for watching and um i'll talk to you again tomorrow bye